The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to first off thank you, everybody, in attendance today. Uh, my name is Mike Koval, and I'm with Imprintables Warehouse. And uh, on behalf of Great Garment Graphics, today we'll be presenting you with today's webinar, which is titled Full Color Heat Printing with Spectra EcoPrint. And first thing we're going to do is uh, just go over a brief outline of what we're going to cover today here in today's webinar. So uh, number one, uh, we'll have a couple of poll questions for everybody here just to get an idea of what everybody has as far as equipment and uh, you know whether you're a beginner, things like that. Uh, we're also going to go over the, the benefits of Spectra EcoPrint. And from there, after discussing those, we'll, talk, we'll actually take a pre-made design in Corel place a cut line around it for the actual printer, which in today's case is the Roland VersaCam. And you know, then we'll show an app, actual video of Spectra EcoPrint being printed, cutted, or cut, weeded, and also the heat application of it. And then after that, we'll go into some pictures of uh, some applications, um, a cost analysis, and also at the very end, uh, and we'll have a special offer from Imprintables Warehouse. So. Um, with all that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and start off with the poll questions. So, Allison, whenever you're ready to post those, uh, go ahead. Okay, so the first poll question of do you own a heat press, Mike, there was 95% of customers answered yes, and 5% of customers answered no. I'm going to go ahead and launch the second poll. It's great that uh, you know, mostly everybody, everybody here has a heat press, which is good. Uh, the heat press is you know, basically the heart of your heat application business, so um, for those of you who uh, don't own a heat press, you know, we'll go over, you know, the heat press briefly once we get into the application portion. Okay, the second poll question is, do you own a solvent printer? And we'll give it a couple more seconds. Okay, and for that, we had 40% of our audience members today um, do own a solvent printer, and 60% do not. Okay. You know, for looks like we're split down the middle uh, with those owning a solvent printer. Um, so some of you will, you know, be pretty familiar with it. Uh, the other half you will not. But again, you know, we could briefly touch base on you know the printers once we get into the to the printing and cutting of the of the media. Okay, so the last poll question is what materials are you currently using? Please select all that apply, color print, express print, SOJAR, solutions, or quick print. And we're uh, waiting. We've got 57% of the audience has voted, so we'll let that go a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to close this, and I'll share these results. Okay, Mike, 6% um, are using the color print, 25% are using express print, 0% are using the SOJAR media, solutions is 13%, and quick print would be 44%. All right, it looks like, uh, you know, everybody... It's using kind of a mix of material, which is which is always good. So, 
uh, this will be a good one for you to, to understand what exactly EcoPrint's going to bring for you and how it, how it will benefit you, you know, maybe overusing something over something else. So um, now that everybody's got their questions answered, now we can get into the, to the meat and potatoes of the presentation. And on first thing we'll cover now are just the uh, benefits of using Spectra EcoPrint. Um, number one in my mind is this heat applied material is very thin and very lightweight. Uh, and I know I'm using a lot of products out there in the market personally. You know, some of them are, do have somewhat of a heavy hand, which, which customers often complain about. Um, so what this one was brought on for, because it is very thin and very lightweight. Um, the next one, it is a PU-based product and not PVC, which is you know, a little more environmentally friendly. And um, you know, while it hasn't been certified CPSIA, um, I do believe that uh, the EcoPrint will be here. You know, we'll have that certification, so we'll meet those uh, requirements. It's also a 20-inch wide production-friendly roll. So it's, and this is a very nice uh, you know, width for when you're doing layout, uh, especially if team names and numbers, oftentimes you could fit two to fill up that role width-wise, so there's not much waste involved. And that 20 inches is also nice if you had to gang, you know, multiple jobs together, you know, to, so if you had four or five jobs, you can lay them out, you know, evenly across that 20 inches. Um, another nice benefit of Ecofilm is there's no dry time prior to the cutting of the design. If some of you are familiar with the Solutions product, uh, you do know, especially Solutions Opaque, that it is best to leave a little bit of dry time prior to the actual cutting of the media. Uh, with the EcoPrint, you do not have to do that. So it could all be done in one application of, or one step of print, and then once it's done, can be fed back to cut immediately. Another great feature of this product is it's very easy to weed, even though it's thin and lightweight. You know, it is easy to weed when it comes to detail and even smaller text. Uh, you know, some of that I've used in the past, you know, detail or small text is sometimes very difficult or a little patience is required to, to weed those materials. Uh, the Ecofilm is also production friendly in the aspect that it could either be hot or cold peel. You know, a lot of times when you press, people just, once that application is done, you know, it, it's a nice benefit. So once it's done, you could just peel that uh, carrier sheet away. Or if you're doing a whole bunch, you could just press, set it to the side, and continue pressing your complete job, and then peel them all after the, all the applications are done. And lastly, to kind of go along with number one, it's thin and lightweight, which also gives it a very nice soft hand, which, which is what your customers demand. At least that's, you know, what, what we hear on the phone. So. Those are the uh, most important benefits in, in my mind of the, the uh, Spectra EcoPrint. And so with the benefits being covered, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to bring up a pre-designed logo uh, in CorelDRAW. Uh, a lot of you folks out there might be using Adobe Illustrator. You know, it's kind of the same process, but in this case, we're going to go over with Corel. What we're going to cover is adding a cut line and then exporting for VersaWorks. And what VersaWorks is, it's a RIP software for the printer that we're going to be using, which is the Volan VersaCam. And you know, for those of you not familiar with the wide format printers, Volan VersaCam is a print cut machine that can print full color, uh, obviously for t-shirt transfers, but also banners and posters and decals and things of that nature. And you may have heard of some other products out there, such as Mamaki, Muto. Those are all solvent or eco-solvent. You often hear uh, ink setups which you know you could print on all these different types of medias. So uh, before we get into um, you know actually designing, I'd like to ask Allison if uh, anybody has asked any questions yet. Actually, um, we do not have any questions at this moment. So I think you're good to keep on okay. going. All right, sounds good. All right, so uh, you know, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this presentation down here for a second, and we're going to go into Corel. And as I said, we're going to take a pre-designed logo and put a cut line around it so that the machine knows where we are cutting. And so now we're in Corel, and we have our logo here. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to copy this. And again, this could be done in a couple of different ways. This is how it's, most, it, it's easiest for me and how I'd explain to my customers uh, to put cut lines. And down here, I'll create a different page and I'll paste the design back on there. 
And what I'm going to do with each of these two pages is use page one as my print file. So I'm basically leaving it alone so I don't accidentally delete anything or take anything away. And I'm going to use page two basically as my cut line. And so what we need to do is we're just going to cut around this outside. So what I'm going to do is weld everything together to make it the most simplest form of artwork. And to do that, just click the weld button up here. And what it's going to do is just make it a big black oval, which is basically what we want. And now I'm going to put a cut line around it. And so I'll select that and use my outline tool. And with the VersaCam and Roll and VersaWorks, you need to specify a hairline outline. And it also has to be specified a certain color name so that VersaWorks can recognize what is a print and what is a cut. So we'll take out our color palettes. And this is something that's been preloaded in our custom spot colors. And you know, with this, actually, this, this uh, version of Corel, we don't have it preloaded, but it's a good idea. So we'll show you how to do it in case you're those that has VersaCam. So we need, it needs to be a custom spot color you know, for VersaWorks to recognize this. So we're going to add a color to the palette. We're going to go to Models. And then we're going to select a color. I like to select something that's very bright and kind of an uncommon color so that you know, it's not going to be uh, mixed up with something and actually part of your design that needs to be printed. So once we pick a color, I'll pick like a magenta type. We're going to add it to the palette. And why did it not add? Okay. I'm in the wrong spot. So we're going to add it up here. Go to palette editor. And we're basically going to be in that custom spot colors as I was before. Click Add Color, and I'm going to select that magenta type color. Hit Add to Palette, go back to our palettes, and here it is here at the end. And we're going to need to rename it Cut Contour. And again, this is what VersaWorks is going to recognize as a cut. So anytime it sees that color, it will know that it needs to be a cut line. We'll hit OK. And then we'll go ahead back to where I was going to add it originally. And again, it needs to be a hairline. And we'll go back to that spot color. Then you'll see our color there, which isn't named. OK. Apologize here. I'm having a little. A little trouble getting this here to save. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. We'll get it, I promise. And here we go. Now we should be back up and running. And there we have our cut contour swatch. And again, that's going to be what VersaWorks is going to differentiate as a cut line. So we'll turn the fill off just so you can see this cut line. And what this file is going to represent is our cut line. And so what we're going to do is copy this and then paste it back on page one, our design. And so basically, you'll notice that we have our cut contour line, which is going to act as our co uh, cutting line for the machine. And so now once you have this done, now we could export and then be ready to take it into Roland VersaWorks. And we'll do that by going to File, then Export. And this needs to be exported as an EPS for the VersaCam. So we'll select EPS in our file type. And you know we could save it as you know whatever you wanted to. In this case, we'll just keep NASCAR. We'll export. And these ones, there's really no changes that need to be made in here. We can just click OK. And it'll go ahead and save. And now we could then bring it into VersaWorks. And as I said, VersaWorks is bundled with the Roland VersaCam. And what it is is a RIP software. There's, you know, there's nothing real you know, in-depth and involved with this software. It's basically what it's doing is taking your designs and sending it over to your printer. Uh, there's no designing involved. Really, all you're doing is your layout. You're telling it to print and cut, selecting color profiles. And we'll go ahead and add our job by going to File, Add Job to QA. And we'll find our design. 
NASCAR. And we'll bring it in. And there we have our job loaded into QA. And there's QA and QB. You know, there's no difference. They just put two Qs in there. And so once we're in VersaWorks, we can open it up. And you'll notice here that you'll see we call these the dancing ants going around this logo. And what that indicates is that's what it's going to cut and everything else it's going to print. Um, so we won't get too, too much further in depth. I just wanted to show you, you know, the, the simple steps that were taking a graphic to putting a cut line and uh, bringing it into VersaWorks. So we'll go back to our PowerPoint today. And and uh, again, might as well you know pause. And if there's any questions out there, Allison, just uh, let me know if there's any I could answer. OK, Mike, we actually do have a question. Um, one of our customers is using CS3. And they'd like to know, in comparison, how thick would uh, an outline be compared to the hairline that you used in Corel? It's uh, one point is what I've always used with Illustrator. You know, I, I don't think it really matters for um, you know, what the actual point is, because as long as it's a stroke, you know, it, it's going to cut it. And as long as it's named that spot color, cut contour, VersaWorks is going to recognize that it's a cut. But uh, in my cases, I've always just used the one point. OK, and that was the only question we have had. OK. Thank you. OK, no problem. And um, now what we'll go through is now that we've seen you know, a brief demonstration of the, you know, the graphic portion of it, uh, we're going to go into the video, which will cover you know, briefly the printing, the cutting, the weeding, the masking, and finally the heat application. OK. And so we'll go ahead and view our video. Now I've already actually had this queued up. And now this is a different design we've used. I don't know what happened to the design we had in this particular video of EcoPrint. But it's the same process right now where it's paused at. It's just in VersaWorks, as you just saw. And so I'll go ahead and click Play here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just talk a little bit. So once it's been sent, what the printer is doing right now is obviously printing the design. And as you can see, it, just, it does offer very vibrant color um, with the EcoPrint. And this is, like you see, the 20-inch wide roll. You could fit a fairly big design on there. And once the job has been completely printed, the machine is then going to feed it back in and contour cut wherever those cut lines were specified. And as I said before, there is no dry time required before cutting. So once the job is done printing, you know, it could be brought back immediately then to cut. And this next portion of the video is the weeding process of EcoPrint. And as everybody knows, with any heat transfer material, you know, there's always going to be some weeding involved and, you know, how hard or how long it's going to take you really depends on the complexity of your design. Um, obviously, in the, in the graphic that I, that I showed you with the NASCAR, it's going to be a fairly easy weed because it's just one simple shape. You know, the design that's being weeded here in this video, you know, we wanted to show it because of its text. And you know, you'll be able to see the, the ease of the weeding of the product, you know, even over lettering and over here underneath his arm, which you'll see in a second, you know, the bow and there's a little necklace kind of hanging off at the side, um, how easy it is to weed. And what he did here is it's called a weed border, and it just, just separates a little bit to make it a little bit easier to know where your actual cut lines are. And so he's going to start at the corner, and then you can see the ease in which the letters are, are being weeded and around this bow uh, where there's no curling of the media or anything like that. See, it's all stayed down nice and flat, and even the smaller cavities are, are very easy to weed for him. And so once, the, once this product is done being weeded, now it's time to use what's called a heat transfer mask. And what the heat transfer mask is, it's just a sticky, clear carrier sheet that's going to go over the top of the design. And then we're going to use a squeegee, which you'll see soon, so that there's no air bubbles in, uh, in the masking. And what it's going to do is once we're done, 
We're going to remove that transfer mask. And what it's going to do is pull up the design from its carrier sheet, keeping all the registration so that we're not having to place, place each um, letter or piece of the design. And then the transfer mask is also going to act as your cover sheet during the heat application process. So we'll go ahead and, excuse me, click play. And we'll go on with the weeding, or the masking, I'm sorry. And as I said, it's just a clear, sticky material that is placed over the design. And if you'll notice here, what he's doing is when he's masking, he's kind of uh, bending it so it's in half. And he's going to start in the middle of the design and go out. And this helps reduce the amount of air bubbles. And another tip, too, you'll notice when squeegeeing, start from the inside out and that forces any air bubbles or air pockets that are in it you know to go outward and you know because if you kind of start it just kind of masked to the inside you know you might trap all that air in there and then ruin your design so that's why it's best to always mask and squeegee from the middle out and you'll see here once the masking is complete he's going to remove it from. And he's actually pulling the back of the material from the mask. Either way will work just fine. This is just a matter of personal preference from person to person. And what he's doing now once it's masked is this sheet right here is the actual carrier sheet that the mask is rolled on because it comes on a roll just like the material. And it's always a good idea to save this so that if you were doing, let's say you had a local high school where you're doing their logos for you know a round of t-shirts. You know, if you printed out a bunch extra because you know they're going to be coming back and it's just a, a job that you repeatedly do, you know, you could print these ahead of time, print them, cut them, mask them, and then weed them, and then once you're done, you could place it back on this. So they could be put on the shelf or anything like that, put into stock so that uh, they could be used at a later date. Okay. And now we're going on to the heat application. And uh, Allison, again, this would be a nice place to stop. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Actually, um, we do have a question. Victor is curious to know okay. um, what the advantages or disadvantages of the EcoPrint over Solutions Opaque. Uh, some of the, the biggest advantage to me you know, of EcoPrint over Solutions Opaque it really only applies to whether it's going on a cotton or polyester is there's no dry time involved with the cutting and or between the print and the cut so it could be print and cut right away solutions can be but you know it is recommended you leave some dry time because if you have any you know detail in your designs you'll notice sometimes that solutions opaque has a tendency to curl especially around lettering and you know finer detail now with eco print you don't see that happen you know it could be weeded away very easily with without any curling and that's the biggest advantage of that. However, you know, if you are going, if you had to apply to nylons, you know, EcoPrint's not going to come into the equation because it doesn't apply to nylons. It's just good for cottons, polyesters, and blends. Okay, Mike. And Victor is also questioning the thickness compared to Solutions Opaque. Is it thicker or similar in hand? It's, uh, it's very similar in hand. Um, it doesn't have the high stretch and rebound that it does, but on a cotton, which is its primary application, you know, you don't really need that high stretch and rebound. So, but it does still offer a very thin, very soft hand, just like the solution's opaque. And you know, one one benefit that I didn't you know mention between that and solution's opaque is this is much less expensive, and you'll see that in the in the slide here at the end. Okay, that's all the questions we have at this time. Okay. All right, now we are on to the heat pressing portion of EcoPrint. And in our video here, we're using the Hotronics Auto Clam. And we'll go ahead and click play again. And we have our garment preloaded. And as always, with any heat press, heat pressing application, you always want to pre press your garment. I'm not sure if we did that. Or have that in this part of the video, but a pre-press, for those of you who don't have a heat press, what a pre-press does is get any moisture or wrinkles that could be in the garment, which then could affect the adhesion of the actual transfer. So you just do that at the temperature that you have it set for the material that you're going to press, and you could do it for about, you know, four to five seconds, which should, which should suffice. Um, if you should happen to see, you know, once your pre-press is done, if you happen to see some steam come out of that shirt, it's a, it's a good idea to, to give it another quick pre-press because there's still a little bit of moisture trapped in that shirt. 
Okay. Well, here, there he is. He's going to do the pre-press. Again, it's just a quick, simple to get the wrinkles and moisture out. Uh, we'll place our EcoPrint material on the shirt. And the EcoPrint applies at a temperature of 320 for 15 seconds. And as I said, this is a hot peel or cold peel, whichever you prefer. Uh, most folks uh, like the hot peel. So, And you can see once that application is done, that mylar backing can be removed. And there we have our finished product. And with EcoPrint, it is a one-step application. You know, there's there's no need to cover with a Teflon sheet and press again. You know, albeit if you you know some people you know like to do you know a, a second press just for more of a peace of mind. You know, while it's not going to hurt it at all, just if you do do a pre uh, a second application or a second press, I should say, cover it with a Teflon sheet just to protect the design and the heat press itself. You know, you could do it for an additional 10 seconds if you if you wish, but again, it's not necessary. Okay, and so there we have the application, of the EcoPrint. Okay, and let me advance through my PowerPoint here again. And why isn't it letting me view my slideshow? There we go. Okay, so now that we saw the video, uh, we do have many potential applications for EcoPrint. Um, some of them being team uniforms. Uh, where EcoPrint could be used very nicely with team uniforms is if you get a lot of call for multicolor applications. Um, you know, typically, you know, most people are using heat applied film, you know, in the single color variety for names and numbers. Um, what you could do with a printable material is now you could start to offer two, three, um, even sort of special effects like actually power clipping the logo into the number, giving it a full color look, you know, because you have now the ability to print on it as many colors as you would like. So that could set you apart from other team workshops just offering the, the standard single color names and numbers. Um, spirit wear. Again, it's popular for you know cheerleading and you know even even fan wear. You know what what parent doesn't like to wear the the name and number of their son or you know with their logo of their team you know while they're in the stands. Uh, another obvious one is t-shirts, caps uh, for the team wear, and you know just any other caps in general. Um, even bags, totes, gym bags, equipment bags, things of that nature. And EcoPrint is a very thin, very soft material, so it's even nice for fashion wear and the you know some of the trendy women's women's garments and things like that that are that are much thinner as far as fabric content. So that it's not a very heavy feel on those sorts of applications. Um, just to give you some some application picks here. Um, you see we have works very nicely, and we have a full color print on the back of a hoodie. With the eco print going on this hoodie, another advantage you know, to, to go over one of the questions of why you should use this over solutions opaque. Is, you know, a lot of times on a heavyweight cotton, the solution opaque, since it has such a high stretch and rebound, it, and you do it on a 100% cotton t-shirt or sweatshirt, it'll have a tendency, it's, it's going to shrink a little bit, and the opaque will want to shrink with that design. It can cause like a raisining, almost puckering effect, and you won't, you won't see this with the eco print. And here's just a standard T-shirt application. You can see a full color. You can see the design, uh, the vibrancy of the color, and the detail that you can achieve with the print. And then, as I mentioned, too, fashion wear. You know, we have a nice little design down here and a lightweight women's shirt, but it's still going to give it that nice soft feel because of how thin the material actually is. And again, here's another popular application outside of uh, you know wearables, which are bags. Uh, like I said, this is a, a tote bag. Um, it could be applied to gym bags, equipment bags, things of that nature. Any cotton, any 100% polyester or you know poly cotton blend. You know this product is perfect for. Um, and before we get into the cost, we'll go ahead and uh, pause again for any questions that there might be. Okay. Um, a couple of the questions we had were related to price, so it looks like as far as that graphic that you printed, um, one of the questions was how much 
um, would that cost in media? Okay. Um, the actual, we'll, we'll get into that right now. The, the pricing slide is going to reflect that actual NASCAR design that, that I actually showed in the couple of slides previously. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead straight into the EcoPrint cost analysis. Um, the running linear yard cost of Spectre EcoPrint is as little as uh, 675 per yard. And to break that down, you know, in that yard you have 120 square inches, and that breaks to, to be down to 0 0.0094 cents per square inch, which puts that material under a penny per square inch. Um, adding in, you know, under a penny per inch in ink cost, and, you know, again, under a penny per square inch in ink cost. Uh, I'm sorry, I reversed this. Uh, ink was first, and the second is the mass cost. And looking at uh, one of the com popular competitors in the market, um, their linear cost per yard is 1080, which would put it at a penny and a half per square inch. So, so we're definitely, you know, with the EcoPrint, you're, you're, you're experiencing some cost savings there for sure. And what does that mean to you, really? Um, let's just take a look at that NASCAR design. That NASCAR design was a 9 by 6 a full color design, which would be on the front or back of a shirt. And using those numbers in the previous slide, you know, with ink, material, as well as the transfer mask, that mask, or that per design was 94 cents. And using competitors' products, you were, not, you were with the same, same um, design size, um, using mask, ink's going to be the same, the mask is probably going to be generally the same, um, but you're looking around $1.14 per design, so you're saving yourself $0.20 cents per design, you know, using the eco print over some of the competitors out there. And again, you know, that cost, the competitor's cost could even go up, you know, because some of it, I was just comparing apples to apples when it comes to material-wise. Um, so, so really, the benefits of this EcoPrint, it's, a less, it's very inexpensive to use, very easy to use, and it's very thin, very lightweight, you know, it gives you a soft hand, which is what everyone's customers demands. And that's why I think it's going to be a great product, it's very relatively new for Imprintables Warehouse. Um, it's gaining a lot of traction now, um, which we've just been showing it off at some trade shows and, you know, finally getting our samples out there, and it's really gaining some traction in the marketplace. So. Um, I think it's going to be a very nice material out there, and I'm recommending everybody here today you know, to, to try it out for themselves. Um, so with that being said, uh, that pretty much concludes our webinar for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, by all means, if there's any other questions or any other information or any discussion points that anybody would like to have, um, you can contact me at 800-347-0068 extension 240. That's my office here at Imprintables, or you can reach me via email at mike at imprintables.com. So as I said, any questions, any discussion points uh, that you'd like to speak with on, with me on the EcoPrint or, or, you know, the printers, or the, for those of you who don't have them, uh, and for those of you who don't have heat press, feel free. I'll be glad to go more in depth on some things like that. So uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, we do have one slide left, I thought, which I might have passed it up. We are having a, uh, we do have a special for everyone here in attendance for the webinar today. It looks like I deleted it from my PowerPoint before I posted it. Uh, what it is, it's a 5% discount on your first order of Spectra EcoPrint. Um, you could, or you can call me directly to take advantage of that, or just call into the 800 number and uh, place your order with a customer service representative, or you could order online. And once you get through the checkout, you could use the promo code ECOPRINT, and that's all capitals, E-C-O-P-R-I-N-T. Again, ECOPRINT, all capitals, no space. And so, uh, again, thank you for attending, and also be sure to register for next, week web next week's webinar, which is uh, something old, something new, heat printing for weddings. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Mike, we do have a couple more questions if you have a minute. Okay. Sure, absolutely. Um, one question, um, David specifically would like to know, using VersaWorks, what um, print profile would he use for printing the EcoPrint? Uh, I would use, it's in VersaWorks, we've, we haven't had this material profiled yet, um, but we've had great success with the TTRH profile within VersaWorks. Okay. 
Um, there is a question in regards to pricing for the print and cut system, the actual vers uh, VersaCam. Okay, with the VersaCam, uh, you're looking at an investment of starting around 13000 and that's a complete package, printer, set of inks. Uh, these printers do come with on-site installation and training, so we would come to uh, somebody's business or shop to, to set it up, and that's basically about a full day's worth of training and installation. Okay, and Michelle is looking for a textured printable media, like a puff type texture um, or a raised surface. So the eco print wouldn't be something she'd be interested in. What what type of product would you recommend? Um, the only thing that the, as far as solvent printable, as far as heat applied, um, it's going to be the the vintage puff in the solutions line that's going to give you any sort of texture or or raised appearance. Okay. Um, okay, David is asking if the eco print can be domed. Uh, yes, it can be. Okay, and there was a question earlier in regards to the neoprene, if you could use the eco print on neoprene. I had responded with no because it's recommended for cotton and polyester, but um, the customer's coming back and saying that it is um, polyester coated neoprene. Would so that like make can koozie, I would assume probably is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's a polyester coated neoprene, then absolutely the the eco print will work. Okay. Because typically that's what the the can koozies and things of that nature are uh, rubberish type neoprene coated with that polyester fabric. Okay, and then Directly one neoprene, no. Okay. That's what I thought. And then um, one other, the print profile that you said for VersaWorks, I'm getting a couple more questions. Can you just repeat that again? Yeah, it's TT, Tom Tom, RH. I think it's textile heat transfer. Let me open up my VersaWorks and see here. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. TTRH, garment heat transfer. Um, we've also have had pretty good success with the uh, quick print and solutions opaque profiles as well. So if they have those loaded, those will work equally as good. Okay, and that wraps up all of the questions today. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Okay, bye.